The spray paint felt tacky on Mac's finger, thick as drying blood. The graffitied word glistened like an unanswered challenge. Whoever tagged the wall had skills to reach this secluded rooftop, and they had some balls to mark her territory. But where were they? Mac crossed the metal gangway between buildings, ignoring the winds tugging at her jacket. Far beneath her feet, the city street churned, an angry river of light, motion, and summer heat. Yet on the other side, the air grew colder, almost autumnal. The rooftop's mechanical stink surrendered to fragrances of spice and incense. An infinite silence coiled around her. Another tag stained the high-rise's wall in wet, ruddy colors. A crude arrow pointed upwards. Instincts, old and primal, told her to run. But Mac found herself ascending. There she discovered an impossibility. An archway rising from the rooftop like an organic growth. Although framed by vibrant skyline, its interior revealed nothingness. A starless void that rippled like oil. She sensed something watching her from that impenetrable dark. It said. She did. And the darkness swallowed her whole. Before we go any further, Cult Divinity Lost is a horror role-playing game for adults. Due to its dark subjects and intense setting, it is unsuitable for younger audiences. Parental guidance and viewer discretion is advised. Beyond Darkness and Madness The introduction is your initial flip-through, like one might do at the bookstore, before the dude behind the counter says, Hey, you gonna buy that? His weird alien tongue darting in and out of his mouth like a reptile. Yeah, I'm buying. The first stop on our journey is the forward. There we learn that this is a Game Master's Guide for Cult Divinity Lost that outlines the GM's obligations and responsibilities, provides tools for managing GM moves and the conversation, and offers insight and inspiration for creation of characters, stories, settings that you have all long desired. True to form, this tome is divided into three major sections, or books, storytelling, atmosphere, and reflections. Your games of Cult Divinity Lost create stories that are, or should be, evolving, changing, affected by player decisions, alive. Book 1, Storytelling, provides tools and inspiration for you to more effectively uphold your Game Master agendas, offering new principles and moves to do that, as well as tools to improve your game's fiction for more personal experience. There are five chapters in this section. Chapter 1, Theater of the Fearful Mind, starts with structure, covering resources for upholding the agenda, structuring a compelling story, effective use of principles and GM moves, hard and soft. It provides more insight into effective horror contracts and techniques for understanding player motivations so you can effectively invoke player fear safely. Chapter 2, Foundations of Dread, takes you further into the darkness of your story's foundation by offering the best practices for your hooks, intrigue map, downtime, bombs, events, dramatic hooks. It discusses techniques for new storytelling styles, generational campaigns, and alternative settings. Chapter 3, Flesh and Soul, provides the flesh for your setting with the tools for dynamic non-player characters and their narrative roles in long campaigns. This includes creating cults, groups, and organizations, and how to include them on your intrigue map. Pillars of the False Heaven, Chapter 4, discusses creating detailed locations using influences and higher powers for a stronger story and to put those places into your campaign, town, or city. Chapter 5, the final chapter of Book 1, is Arcana and Apparitions. This chapter has the tools for developing objects and monsters, how to use them in your narrative as hubs that are integral to your players. Book 2, Atmosphere, contains the next five chapters and provides insight into different sub-genres of horror and how to incorporate them into your stories. 
Chapter 6 of Fears Unknown explores cosmic horror, existential dread, and their effects, how to use them in your stories. It also analyzes influences, higher powers, and their effects. Chapter 7 Disturbing Behaviors explores extreme horror and violence, how to balance them properly and portray them with realism safely. Chapter 8, New Flesh, Ancient Desires, explores body horror and eroticism, including issues of role-playing sexuality and intimacy while upholding your commitments to the horror contract. Exquisite Horrors, Chapter 9, digs into the sublime and aesthetic technique of blending beauty and horror rooted in gothic horror and provides the tools for their effective use. Prisons of the Self finishes book two and is a guide for handling trauma in play, exploring the inner horrors of the player characters. Have you seen The Place of Wrath and Tears? The final chapters, 11 through 16, compile book three, Reflections. This book will help those game masters who are looking to alter their game setting and how to personalize the agenda, principles, and fictions to present reflections of the cult universe that may not necessarily be divinity lost. For example, Chapter 11, Gods and Monsters, shows a reflection that focuses heavy on the supernatural with creatures from a fractured illusion who have invaded and populated Elysium with us, and the Archons and Death Angels actively and openly engage in conflict. Chapter 12, Darkness and Decay, offers reflections of uncanny, subtle, and strange overt horrors shrouded in mystery and ambiguity as the player characters are pulled into madness and mistrust of their own existence. Illusions and Sorrows, the 13th chapter focuses on an Asian horror reflection. Chapter 14, Blood and Guts is a reflection of action horror rather than plot, suitable for hordes of zombies that will chase the player characters endlessly. Survival horror is expanded on in chapter 15, we unlucky few, while chapter 16 offers a reflection that focuses on young adults and players playing children discovering secrets and hunting down monsters. Beyond Darkness and Madness is not an instruction manual. It is a tome of resources for a multitude of different styles of fiction and how to use them safely and effectively. It isn't possible to include everything discussed between the covers in one game and for your player's sake, don't attempt it. But the introduction to Beyond Darkness and Madness doesn't end there. Next is nothing less than an essay on Cult Divinity Lost as a game for adults and what that means. It is a great discussion on the topic I feel all game masters should read. It's also a handy lead-in to the next section that highlights your responsibility as an adjudicator, creator, and narrator. The introduction to Beyond Darkness and Madness summarizes with several pages establishing your horror contract and a variety of safety techniques that can be tailored to you and your players. It details boundaries, player fears, the forbidden, and evolution of horror within the progression of your games. We'll get into the chapters of Beyond Darkness and Madness over the course of this year. The next video starts at the top with Book 1, Storytelling, Chapter 1, Theater of the Fearful Mind. There we will look at collaborative storytelling, compelling conflict, the spiral of horror, and more. This series is funded entirely with the help provided by our generous Patreon supporting producers. Chaotic Story, Tdorf67, Adam Lake, Kamui Elira, Matthias Olson, Izzy Skirmish, Mr. Cultus, David Hegberg, Emil Audit, and Jess Rogers. If you would like to help these videos continue and improve, they are totally reliant on the awesome support from viewers like you. Consider joining our Patreon and becoming a supporting producer yourself. If you would like to help me get more of these videos out, the like button, notification bell, and subscribe button are an excellent and completely free way to do just that. Thank you Helmgast for your blessings on our work and for this dark and horribly wonderful game. If you watch to hear at the end, thank you. Of all the clues I have planned, consider part of this one a gift. Here's an early look at the mediography included at the end of the introduction in Beyond Darkness and Madness. In the next video, there will be another surprise clue hidden at the end. Good luck.